Okay, now uh, everyone should be able to see me. Yes, I can see. That's perfect. I can hear your voice too. So let's start with today's session. It's not actually uh, a session on which I will be teaching you on something because I'm not your teacher. As I told you earlier, I will be your SME, and my job is to coordinate each one of you and work towards the betterment of the online learning portal, wherein you can learn everything online. And I always uh, have been. Uh, Considering this fact that uh, most of the people are working and they are not able to come uh, on to the online web chat sessions and they are not being able to attend and they cannot actually in the real time scenario cannot attend those sessions. But uh, as much as they can, my responsibility is to make you people come online so that you people can coordinate with each other. Because the online portal, the discussion forums, they are only for you people, it's not for me. I have been developing blogs, I have been developing all of the things, the video lectures and e-lectures, your e-book, all, the, all of these things have been developed for you. So without any delay, I think we have already delayed a lot. So I should be starting with today's session and uh, I am working on time management today. Uh, first of all, I would like to hear any questions from your side, anybody, if you have any questions regarding the time management system. Uh, how much do you think time management uh, contributes towards your... Uh, learning towards your environment, towards your daily routine. How much does uh, time management contribute? Anybody? If you are not uh, able to use your mic, you can send me your questions on chat also. I'll be answering them. Any questions from anyone? For us. Sure, go ahead. If you have any questions, I am able to answer them right now. I can hear you. Uh, there is no question. Just to uh, time you put on your time. So you are working right now. Where are you working? I am working in a gas manager. I am going to be in gas plant. That's perfect. That's a nice uh, thing to do. That is just true. Because time is money, you know. Because it's a true value. You cannot produce. So you are losing the money. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I want to um, concentrate on because everybody should be uh, aware that time is money nowadays and uh, perfectly said, uh, Mr. Hamid is, uh, with us uh, said that time is money. Uh, that's right. So, Mr. Hamid, very good. That is what I am going to talk about right now because you are losing time, you are losing money. Perfectly said. So, we'll start with, I have got some uh, uh, lecture stuff with me. Uh, I got this from, from a very uh, nice post. Uh, I wanted to okay. share it with you all people because most of the times I share whatever knowledge I have or I gain from other people and uh, I share from books and uh, videos. I would like to go ahead and I would like to read this first paragraph of this particular session to you. Uh, but I know as, a, uh, as this author says, good time management is essential to success at university. Planning your time allows you to spread your work over a session. Avoid the traffic jam of work and cope with study stress. Studying at university often involves meeting conflicting deadlines and unless you plan ahead, you'll find it impossible to change. To meet the demands of study, you need to spread your workload over a session, work out what needs to be done and when, work out how you use your available time as efficiently as possible. So right now, I would like to know from you people, what does efficiently managing a time for you means? When because uh, this is the right time, right decision. Absolutely. This is the right time. Absolutely. Right time, right decision. Right time and right decisions make a successful person. That's what I think. Because if a decision has been taken at a wrong time, it doesn't make any sense. And if a wrong time has been chosen to do a right decision, it also would not make any sense. So absolutely, uh, uh, time management should be uh, efficient. By just uh, working on time management, you cannot uh, uh, contribute towards your success. You just have to efficiently work on it. I'll start with the first thing. That first thing for us would be plan ahead and prioritize. I would say that planning ahead is very important. Whenever you have a calendar in front of you, I, I'm sure that you must be using an Outlook or uh, any other device on which you have a calendar. Uh, nowadays, everyone uses a smartphone. Everybody has a calendar in it. It is very important because most of the times when you are using your mobile phones, you are just uh, speaking to someone, you are texting someone or you are just surfing the net. So why not use your smart mobile, your smart mobile phone to 
just prioritize your time too because if you have a calendar and you have certain specific uh, uh, applications wherein you can assign certain tasks to remember yourself to remind yourself that uh, this particular need uh, particular thing needs to be done at one particular time so if you have a meeting at 5 and you are outside somewhere if you are not in your office if you are not sitting at your desktop wherever you when you have don't have an outlook or something then why not use your mobile phone just assign a task in your mobile phone say that you have a meeting at 5 or uh, you want to go to hospital at 5 or you have a study lecture at 5 anything anything which you, you think is really important and you need to attend why not put it on your mobile phone every time you assign a task your mobile phone will be able to tell you that you have a you need to work on it that at this particular time you need to go to one particular place and you need to attend a session like this one uh, Absolutely, the first step as the author says, two weeks, then you should be concentrating on essay because that is really important right now. You have got two hours to prepare it. That is a very simple example to explain how efficiently the time should be presented. To prioritize successfully, you must develop weekly and long-term time management plans. Many students find long, medium and short-term planning useful for organizing their study. This is very important because right now all of you are students as well as workers. You have been working in multinationals, you have been working in all other corporations and you need to work on your studies. Yes, so I was saying uh, it is very important for all of you to prioritize your studies as well as your uh, work uh, commitments uh, at uh, the same priority. You cannot say that studies is more important or your uh, corporate commitment is more important but uh, that is true that you have to manage both of things at the same time but in a real time scenario you will not be able to concentrate on both, both the things at the same time so you need to prioritize which commitment you need to cater first if you have got uh, a meeting in a day and you need to prepare a presentation and provide it to someone by the day end I think you would be better able to prioritize which one needs to be done first if you have a, a meeting commitment in a day that would be presented first but what if you have a meeting commitment and you have a presentation at the same time how you will be able to prioritize it would like others to participate there just let me know if you have two commitments at the same time how you will be able to prioritize it which one is more important that one need to do the first Absolutely. Considering the fact that you have got two commitments in one. Yes, uh, somebody else was saying something. Okay, must be something else. Uh, very perfectly, Mr. Hamid said uh, that we would be doing the thing which is very important at that particular point of time. If a meeting is important and if you have got even a single uh, minute delay of five minutes, that can prove very useful to you. If you have a meeting and a presentation and you have got just a five minutes break in between, that can prove very useful. You can just replenish yourself, you can get back to your presentation, you can present it in a very good manner till that, and by that time you must have finished your, uh, your meeting which was already due at that time. Or what you can do, the best thing to do at that particular point of time when you have got two commitments at one time, say you have got both the things at five, how to do it? First of all, find out that which one is more important, as Mr. Hamid said. After that, the second thing would be sending out uh, a stinker to everyone that this particular session will be uh, held on this particular time because I have got another commitment lined up and which is really important. I cannot delay that one, which is very important because it will help others, uh, other people to manage their time efficiently. If you have been sending invites to someone and you have been not getting back to them, like I have arranged a webcast and if I would not have been speaking to you, nobody would have been in this line. Nobody would have been waiting for me for 20 minutes if I would not have been telling you that we, we are about to join or we are about to start this session and I would not have been coming up. Then this would be a wrong thing to do. Uh, first thing I would like to come up from this particular topic. Author concentrates on long term planning. Long term planning I would say yearly planner. How many of you have got a calendar with yourselves wherein you plan your uh, yearly commitments? Hello, I can hear you. Please uh, recite your name. I am with you. 
Name. Hi, name. This is uh, SME. What's your, what's your question? My question is, if two tasks are at, at the same level of importance, then how do we prioritize? Okay. Prioritization, as I said, it is a, a scenario wherein you have to uh, commit to one task at one particular point of time. What you can do is, the importance of those tasks cannot be divided. It's not a real-time scenario wherein uh, I will take uh, a very stringent example. Uh, say you have got a hospital commitment at 5 and uh, you have got a corporate presentation at 5 too. These are two important tasks but only at their own points. Hospital commitment is separate, corporate commitment is separate. But at that particular point of time, uh, my dear friend, your health is wealth. If you are working uh, fine on your health, you will be able to deliver your corporate commitments. So your first thing need to, that needs to be done is just sending a stinker to all the people you have got a corporate commitment with that you will be attending a hospital session, you have a session with your doctor and you will not be able to do uh, the session at five, 5 which was already committed so you are changing and shifting the time to 5.30 or 6. See, most of the times we don't send a stinker to anyone. We think that it might hamper us, it might come back to us but it doesn't. In my last session I, I also said I have got uh, 10 years of corporate experience. I have been working with a multinational from last 10 years. Sending an email, changing shift timings is not against you. If you are telling upfront someone that you will not be able to attend this particular session because you have got one certain commitment which is really important and they will be able to understand it. They will really be glad that you uh, already upfront told them that you will not be able to do it, which is really important. If you have got, uh, I am taking a second scenario here, if you have got two commitments in corporate world itself, like uh, you have got a call, a conference call with the client and you have got uh, a specific email to answer to client on uh, say 5. So what would be the best thing to do? The best thing to do on that particular point is call is more important. Send an email to that particular person that uh, the thing do you were about to discuss on that particular email will be discussed on 5.30 because on 5 you have a specific call with the client because you are dealing with the clients and the clients they are paying you. So the clients become more important rather than answering an email internally. So you, this is the way you have to always prioritize, you always have to send something, uh, you just have to uh, uh, I would not say neglect, that would be a very negative word to say. You cannot neglect anyone, but you can just upfront tell other people that this particular section can be shifted to some other time slot because you already have got a commitment in one particular time slot and you need to work on that particular one. That's really important. Does that answer your question, Rain? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you, uh, So I was on to the long term planning. Uh, using an yearly planner. How many of us uh, use the yearly planner? Do you have a calendar and do you mark your month-wise uh, month commitments on it? You see, it doesn't come to yearly plans like most of the months of two or three months. Absolutely. Uh, I will give you a scenario uh, wherein you will be able to know that uh, you do uh, commit certain tasks yearly. Uh, I am sure most of you would not be happy or you would not be glad enough to uh, forget your marriage anniversary. Have you ever? If I am married, there is no plan, so I don't know about that. Okay, so you, for those who are not married, either they would be able to uh, remember their birthdays or the, their parents' birthday. Yeah, we definitely have a yearly plan, I think. Like you said earlier, you mostly use our phones to remind us. Absolutely. Uh, and that's a very good thing to do because uh, a phone is a device which I really uh, think, which I really think is uh, important for us and uh, it really helps us a lot. Uh, I always keep my phone along, I never lose it. Once I lose it, I feel very handicapped and I feel like I have lost a part of my life because most of my commitments are jotted down on my phone. I always refer to my phone whenever I have to. 
uh, check out on one particular thing or the other, or my tasks and commitments are there. Okay, so I was working on yearly planner. Uh, what I was saying is, we all use yearly planners. The only thing is, it is not jotted down on calendar. It is jotted down here. It is jotted down in our mind. We don't uh, forget to wish our parents on their birthdays. We don't forget to wish our parents on their anniversaries. We don't forget our anniversaries. So all those yearly planners are in our mind. So if you already know that you have got uh, a commitment with your parents, you have to wish your parents and you have to visit them uh, on one particular date. Say I'll take 11th of November. Okay, so 11th of November I have got my parents anniversary and I have got to visit them. You cannot turn up to your corporate uh, clients, you cannot turn up to your corporate seniors on 10th of November and you can say, okay, this is 10th of November, tomorrow I need a holiday because I have to visit my parents. No, this will be a very bad thing to do, very negative thing to do because unscheduled holidays are restricted in any corporate world. So what we, you can do is, 11th November, you have got your parents visit, plan ahead, in the month advance, just let your seniors know, okay, 11th November, I'll be taking an off. You already know that. You already know that you will be taking an off on 11th, so why not inform your seniors or your clients a month in advance? Just drop an email. That's why it is designed for. Just drop an email that, okay, 11th November, I'll be requiring a holiday because I have to visit my parents and I will not, at that time, I will be out of office and will not be responding to your emails or any other commitments I've got. That's a perfectly alright thing to do because if you don't do it, see, it is not considered to be negative. If you're sending an email that on that one particular day you'll be uh, requiring a holiday. But if you come up to your seniors or your clients and you say a day in advance that tomorrow you need a holiday, it will be considered a negative thing. That if you it was an anniversary and if you were already aware of it, why you could not have informed everyone of it in advance? And believe me, unscheduled holidays in corporates are treated like hell. They don't spare you for it. Uh, what we can do is, apart from uh, all these things we already remember in our mind calendar, why not jot down major events on your calendar too? Like, uh, in month, a month in advance, I sent a stinker to everyone that uh, I'll be holding a webcast on 30th, on 30th of next month. Or uh, there would be an exam session held six months down line from now. After six months, there will be an exam session and you all need to prepare for it. Or I would say, if you go one year down the line, one year down the line, I would say, okay, once your session is over with us, once you have completed your post-graduation, you have got your degrees in hand, we'll be holding uh, a corporate session wherein all the corporate clients would be coming in and they would be recruiting people for high-level positions and you all are invited. For all those who need uh, a better position or who need to get recruited to corporate clients, uh, they would be waiting for that particular uh, session to come up. So they can jot it down on, your, on their mobile phones, on their calendars that, okay, one year down the line, after I finish my graduation, on this particular date, the corporate clients would be coming in and I need to visit my center so that I can present myself in the interview and back myself a job, which is really important. We all are working, we all are gaining knowledge for our own sake as well as, uh, I, would not for, I would not say for own sake, I would say for own knowledge sake as well as for financial sake. Because you increase uh, two things in life, that is your bank account, second is your knowledge. Both of things you work parallel. You have to go side by side on uh, both of them. You are increasing your knowledge, you are increasing your bank account, you are living your life you're enjoying it which is really important uh, okay so this was uh, uh, the yearly time slots now I will come on to the weekly time slots because yearly and monthly can be bifurcated uh, into two things into subordinates of one particular which is known as yearly one uh, but weekly that comes to not uh, long time planning it actually comes into uh, I would say a short term most of the uh, thing, there is an ambiguity between the authors whether some people like to term it as a long term commitment or they would like to term it as a short term commitment. I would myself like to term it as a short term commitment because when you are working, when you have got yourself involved in your studies and in your uh, uh, 
uh, in your corporate commitments, you, are, you don't even know how a week goes. You have got so many things at hand. You have got so many things at hand that you will not uh, be able to find out that uh, how you spend the week. Then you are working on one particular project. You don't even know how the hours go. So myself, I actually prefer to keep it on the short term slot that a weekly planning is a short term thing. Uh, it can be divided into three. As per this author, I have uh, chosen this author because it has got a very nice way of uh, defining things in different time, in, uh, in different slots. Uh, weekly basis, we can divide it into three slots. First comes as short time slots. Second one is medium time slots. And third one is long time slots. Uh, as per the author, short time slots, one hour or less can be termed in short term slots. We can review our lectures. We can complete short readings like short emails, short essays, or if you have got one particular, uh, say, assignment, which you are aware that you will be able to complete in time, you can complete that particular session. Uh, you can think over some problems. You can revise for your exams. Uh, you can proofread, proofread an email, or you can uh, do one particular uh, project at hand if you are reviewing it. Then we come on to the medium time slots where an author says one to three hours is good time for more concentrated study. Medium slot can be used for detailed note reviewing. That means an email which requires more than an hour's time and less than three hours time for review. Reading for courses, assignments, this uh, I think you will be able to complete one particular chapter for any subject in three hours time, which is really important. So if you know that you have got three hours of time for for next particular, uh, for next particular three hours, I think somebody is trying to say something. Uh, is that PS? PS, we are not able to hear you. PS, you seem to be mute. We are not able to hear your voice. You are trying to say something? Okay, there was nothing. So I will continue with what I was saying. Uh, medium time slots, uh, we can use it for uh, completing an assignment, reading a chapter or an email which requires a one, more than one hour's time and less than three hours time for review. We can draft or edit such a thing which requires this much of time or we can revise for an exam. Obviously, if you are going for an exam and if you have got three hours of time, you can certainly do that in three hours of time. Then we come on to the long time slots which says more than three hours can be set aside for working on any assignment, completing an extensive amount of reading, doing research for assignments, revising for exams. Again. See, basically these are just materialistic things, uh, just bookish things because uh, the, what authors say is what they have already felt in life. It is not necessary that you will be feeling the same thing in your life too. Maybe you have got commitments where uh, you have to shift on time slots by minutes or by I would say half an hour or by an hour. So you cannot uh, go on to one particular time slot and you can decide okay for next three uh, uh, particular hours I will be doing just this thing and I will not be concentrating on anything else which is completely realistic completely realistic you can certainly do that because it's you who can decide the best that how much of time you need to allot to any particular assignment which is in your hand how much time you need to uh, uh, give to any session which uh, you are working on uh, Okay, next I come on to, just like I said, there is a planning for the year ahead. We can also plan for the week. We always do that. Most of the people who are working in corporate world already, we have got new people joining in. Hello there. Jensen. Jensen, can you hear me? Yeah, that's perfect. So we have already started. Uh, we are in the middle of the session. So I was working on, I covered full yearly planner. I covered weekly planner. Now I am coming on to fill in the weekly, uh, how to fill in the we uh, weekly planner. Okay, most of the times when we are uh, sitting on our outlook or we have a phone in hand, we have got a planner in which all the weekly time slots are available. Date wise, and time-wise commitments can be jotted down on your Outlook calendar or any device on which you have got a calendar. 
Uh, I have got uh, something in front of me. I don't know if you are able to see it because the focus is not clear. Uh, this is a kind of planner which author says can be used, but uh, it is just an example. It is just an example. You already uh, have a lot of planners in uh, your devices and in your desktops in your applications. So you can use them. You can always uh, uh, date wise and time wise slot yourself to uh, uh, work on particular commitments and assignments which is really important because most of the times you won't remember that if you have got 10 commitments I don't want to, I don't expect anybody to remember all the 10 commitments. You might remember 8 and you forget 2. You might remember 2 and you forget other 8. So what if you forget other 8 or you forget other 2 and you are not able to deliver to those commitments which are really important. So why why not jot it down? Why not just keep it on your device all the time so that it keeps reminding you, okay, there are two commitments left, there are five commitments left, there are four assignments, there are two uh, chapter reviews, there are two, two meetings or two presentations. Why not use that particular device which science, which science has provided us to manage our time efficiently? <coughs> Fill in the weekly planner. Very important, very useful, very, very useful in your corporate life in your uh, daily routine as well. All the students who are not working in the corporate world but they are just studying right now, it's very important for them too because they can manage their time between the family, friends, uh, games, studies and uh, job hunting, I think. Because at this time most of the people are doing job hunting. Uh, they are hunting for jobs when they are into their post-graduation. So you can always uh, fill in the time slots. You don't want to miss out on any interview. You don't want to miss out on any uh, game session, you don't want to miss out on baseball, cricket, basketball or anything. So it's not only the corporate people, it's you as well as a student uh, for uh, whom the weekly planner can turn out to be very useful. Uh, okay, the next thing author comes on to is flexibility. Why do you think flexibility is more important? I will just read out this paragraph which author says uh, to define why he says you should be flexible with your time. The author says some weeks will be busier than others and unforeseen things can happen. Unforeseen things as I said uh, in a real time scenario these keep coming up. Remember that a timetable is only a plan or a guide. You don't have to follow it religiously every week but try to stick to your plan as best as you can. If you plan a study time slot and miss it don't panic. Look at the schedule and rearrange your time. So being flexible helps you if you miss, uh, if you miss on your commitments. Uh, I will take an example here. I have got five commitments in hand. Uh, I would request everybody to turn off their mics please because I can see, I can hear the background music. Please turn off your mics please till the time you have any questions for us. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So what I was saying is being flexible is very important because most of the times if you have got uh, uh, certain commitments at hand, I will take that as an example. I have got five commitments for a day. Uh, uh, at 11 o'clock, I had to study something. At 12 o'clock, I had to meet someone. At 1 o'clock, I had need to take my food. At uh, 2 o'clock, I need to meet my parents which live in... Uh, live apart from, away apart from me. Uh, you miss out on your studies because you woke up late. You decided that you will be studying a chapter at 11 and you woke up at 11.30 and you feel like okay I have missed the chapter so I will not be doing it today uh, because I have got four commitments lined up and uh, that will be a thing I will be doing next week. No, that's not important. If you have missed out on something, don't get panicked, don't decide something immediately, just get back to your planner. Rearrange it. Find out if there is any time slot which can be shifted to some other place and you can fix your time slot which you have already missed onto that particular point. Like you missed on your studies and you are going to meet your parents at 2. You can shift your time slot of visiting your parents to 3 because after that you have got all your time. Till 2 to 3 you can fix it on your studies because next day might be your exam you have to appear for anything. I don't know. These are just uh, some examples. In a real time scenario, the situations would be merely, uh, would be very different and it would be just on to you how you decide to uh, bifurcate your time into different commitments. So being flexible about your time slot is really important. You might come up with some commitment which is really important then but you have already planned. 
and you need to cater to that which is really important so be flexible with your timelines be flexible with your planners so that you are uh, able to uh, shift between uh, different commitments at time whenever they occur some unforeseen events or something uh, this is very important as i always say be realistic don't go by what the author says don't go by what i say don't go by uh, what your books say because they are there just to guide you up they are there to pro provide you with uh, uh, a certain guidelines that these are the best possible steps that you can take to eradicate a particular situation or to deal with one particular situation but by being realistic you will be able to know that how to manage your own time you will be able to know that if you have got 10 commitments online uh, how you will be able to uh, bifurcate them okay let me go on to what the uh, author is working on just give me a second mm. yes so next thing the author talks about is over commitment it's fatal guys if you are working on a, in a corporate world it's fatal that you over commit to anything uh, i will explain it by giving another example you have got uh, studies you have got your corporate commitments you have got your uh, uh, i would say family commitments you have got your social commitments i will divide uh, this example into four things family social corporate and your studies so if you are over committing to studies that you say okay i'll have got 6 uh, hours of time to study but i will take it as 12 hours so use uh, use 12 hours of your time for study and you don't commit to any other thing on that particular day you have got lost on it if you have got a corporate commitment which takes 3 hours of time but you plan ahead and you say okay i'll finish the next day's work or next week's work again in advance i don't want to visit office next week or something i am feeling lazy so i over committed to one particular task and i forgot that i have to visit my family i forgot that i have to some uh, social commitments to cater to so over commitment is very fatal don't over commit on anything till the time that particular task is really important and has got uh, much importance on all other things you have already decided on your schedule or your planner okay so next thing i come up with seeking help author says uh, i would read out this paragraph to you because it is really important because most of the times people will say why i need help i this is my scheduler i need to plan why i require help from anyone and in what cases i require help from anyone the author says it's easy to procrastinate when you experience difficulties with an with an assignment but putting off starting only means you will have less time to work on it if you miss an assignment deadline you will lose marks so if you think you need some assistance ask for it remember good time management includes good self management talk to your tutor about difficult assignments or visit services like the learning center or the counseling services don't put off seeking advices the longer you wait the more anxious you will feel uh okay this is a very real time scenario because most of the times i have seen the students coming up to me and being very panicked and anxious about okay i have missed the webcast what i need to do i have lost i have not done the assignment i have not written this essay and i have not read anything what will i do i will lose out of my 30 marks and just because of that uh, one particular panic attack they get at, the, at that one particular point of time they lose out on other commitments too seek help we are sitting for there your qa your sme your coordinator they are sitting here your teachers are sitting here whenever you have some problems related to your subjects or if you cannot commit to one particular point uh, any particular thing just come back to your coordinator let them know that this is the problem which is happening and we'll try sort it out we'll try to manage your time our time so that both uh, both of us can work together towards something else and we can come up with a solution to it so this is how an author explains if you are studying if you are working at the same time how you should be able to seek help and manage your time if you are not able to do one particular thing you should be informing your coordinators your learning center uh, that
that you will not be able to attend a particular session or you will not be able to attend this particular chapter and you need to uh, move it to some other time slot if possible. If the, it is possible, it will certainly be done. If you cannot, if you have got some study commitment which you cannot lose out on like you have got an exam and you cannot get it to a corporate commitment that you will not be able to present a presentation at one particular point of time or you will not be able to attend a meeting session. Tell the corporate clients that you will be attending an exam session and you will not be able uh, to present uh, it on one uh, particular time so they can shift it to something else to some other time slot so that you can cater to it too so always seek advice always seek help whenever you are in trouble whenever you are anxious or you have got a panic attack about something that you have lost a time schedule you have lost a time slot and you will not be able to get it always seek help uh, common time thieves author says uh, Feeling so overwhelmed and anxious about your workload that you freeze, put things off and don't get anything done. Okay, a person has done, uh, I would take an example from uh, the, uh, I would say coding industry, uh, software industry. You have got one particular code in front of you. You have developed and written that code in different styles 20 times. And you are so sure of it that any time, whenever you give given that code you can uh, finish it off in a second like this in a flash of a second and suddenly you give yourself five minutes of time and you say okay in five minutes I'll be able to finish this coding so I don't need much time than five minutes and you just keep the last five minutes of your time for that particular coding set you start sitting you start working on it your system crashes off your network is down your application is not working what you will do at that time? It becomes really fatal. So always, even if you are sure of something, don't let yourself freeze. Don't let yourself uh, get into a situation wherein you have not, you you are not able to work on that particular situation. Always give yourself time. If you are sure that you will be able to do that thing in five minutes, give yourself fifteen minutes for it. It's not over commitment. It's just going making sure that you will be able to finish it in time or don't put things uh, uh, I would say for the end of the time by the end of the day you are about to leave office or you are about to leave uh, to some other specific engagement uh, and uh, your study or your uh, corporate commitment should not happen because of this second problem putting off uh, starting a task because it feels so overwhelming or difficult that you can't face it Again, I would take an example from uh, my own real life scenario. When I started working, I started working with uh, an international call center where I used to take calls for uh, uh, a multinational uh, telecom company. I was so confused what I will do when a customer comes online, uh, he'll start talking to me and I will be like, I used to get freeze on the call. So confused and so baffled that I don't know anything what I will do about this then I came across my trainer who was actually working with us uh, at that time he was providing us the floor support he came to us and he said okay what are you uh, facing trouble with I said I am confused I am baffled I don't know how to answer their questions they have got 10 queries at the same time and I am not able to understand what to do it what to do how to go about it then they said confusion is time killing and time killing is money killing. Money killing is fatal again. So what you should be doing whenever you are confused or baffled about one particular situation, you are not able to understand that you have been able, you, will you be able to deliver this particular task or you will not be able to, jot down the difficulties you are facing on that particular task. Jot down each and everything. Okay, the first question was this. I don't know how to answer it. Second question was this. I don't know how to answer this. Third question is I don't know how to answer this. Okay, fourth question, I know, but I would be requiring support from whom? I would be requiring support from my trainer. I would be requiring support from my dad. I would be requiring support from somebody else. Jot it down and go by the situation one by one. Okay, you have got one particular situation in hand. You don't know what to do about, but you have jotted down 10 difficult points which can help you in sorting out that situation. You go on to that, uh, uh, you, you go on to those uh, uh, checklist you, you go to that checklist and you go on to the topics one by one you sort them out see if you have sorted those 10 difficult situations in front of you you have sorted the problem 
So always, whenever you have problem, don't get baffled, don't get confused. Just start, jot down everything you are facing trouble with and seek help, finish it off. Confusion is uh, not uh, good for your time management, you are efficiently managing your time. Okay, procrastination we have already talked about, spending time on irrelevant tasks. Like you have got an email to answer to, but you are uh, working on junk emails. You are sending out stuff to your friends for uh, uh, fun, or you are sending out stuff to your uh, peers uh, so that you can have a, okay, I am discussing with my peers on email, okay, let's hang out together after office, we'll go, to, we'll go and watch a movie when we have got some emails to answer what we should call it that's called procrastination just doing irrelevant works at time when some relevant tasks are uh, pending always get back to your relevant tasks first finish off your emails finish, finish off your uh, important tasks and then come on to other ones which are not really important ok this is really uh, for uh, Creative people, I have seen more creative people uh, with these kind of scenarios. Author says, daydreaming or drifting off. We are working on something, suddenly we start dreaming of something. Okay, I want to visit a place with snow. And I am working on an email and I start thinking about mountains and snow and vehicles and all of the things that I will be doing once, once I go there. And I totally forget that I have got an email to answer. That's called daydreaming. Most of the times we do it, uh, uh, maybe uh, I would say every second person, every second person uh, faces this scenario once in a while, while doing an important task, they start daydreaming, we cannot stop it, just shake your head off, just uh, take that thing out of, out of your mind at that one particular point of time when you are doing something important uh, on your uh, commitments. Uh, you, just leave that thing for a particular point of time. You have got uh, all your time uh, after you cater to your commitments to think about it. Then also comes to a feeling that you can't begin because you won't be able to produce a perfect assignment. Sometimes what happens when we start working on one particular assignment, we say, okay, this is not my stuff. I cannot do it. This is not my cup of tea. I cannot do it. At that time, what author says, I will read out this to you because author has a, got a very interesting way of saying it. Forget about writing a masterpiece. You have been provided with something. Forget about writing a masterpiece. If you have seen somebody uh, doing something in a really nice manner and you think you cannot do it in a nice manner, forget about it. I will give you a real time example from my life in a corporate scenario. When I started working, I used to see very beautiful dashboards, everything written down in Excel format and everybody used to be, uh, uh, used to be very, sorry? Naim, did you say anything? Okay, am I audible now? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Naim. So, we come on to, uh, uh, I was uh, taking a real life scenario in which what happens is, uh, I, when I started working, I was overwhelmed to see very beautiful, nice dashboards uh, with all kind of reports in it provided to us and we were so happy to see it and one day suddenly my manager said, I feel you efficient enough to provide a dashboard. So, you start working on a dashboard. And I was like, huh? me, dashboard, what? No. I cannot create a dashboard. I cannot create uh, such a beautiful thing the other people do. So he said to me, just at least start working on it. I don't need a masterpiece from you. I need something that provides me a particular report, a particular thing that explains what is going on. That's what author says, forget about writing a masterpiece. Aim for reasonable results. It's better to produce a reasonable effort and pass than to delay for so long that you produce nothing. If you are able to produce anything at your end, which uh, you have been thought of very efficient enough that you will be able to do it, and you don't do it just because you think that you will not be able to produce a masterpiece out of it. No, we don't need a masterpiece. Sometimes we just need is a report. We need is uh, an information. 
it need not uh, it need not to be beautiful enough for everybody to go overwhelmed or something it should be able to pass the message along okay this much of people were present this much of people were not you need not be writing in a very beautiful format but you can pass the message along so don't think about creating a masterpiece whenever you are assigned with any new assignment just start working on it and you will be able to learn it on the way the time uh, you will finish working it you will already have something in your mind the next time you are assigned with particular assignment what new you will do with it so if i started working on one dashboard when i know nothing about by the time i will finish my dashboard i will already have things in my mind which i will do when next time i am set to prepare a dashboard so that's your uh, creativity that comes in that's your knowledge that comes in at that particular point of time which is really important so forget about creating masterpieces your masterpiece will come up only when you know thing properly and when you will know thing properly it will be only when you will start working on it uh, i will read out this one to you from the author because it is specifically for the students they say some of the following comments from university students at the end of their first year discuss issue of study and time which is exactly similar the comments are about two areas planning ahead without uh, getting obsessed about it and developing effective habits for dealing with worry and stress this is what uh, they had to say about time management compared to school it is not Hello, that the work am i audible again am i audible again yeah yeah fine uh, i don't know how is getting muted again and again so it's being shot here okay i'll take care of that thanks naeem yeah. once again okay so students say compared to school it's not that the work is harder it's just that it is more detailed and therefore more time consuming working is not harder it is time consuming studies are more difficult or work is more difficult it has always been a question it has always been a something that we need to discuss in limits we cannot uh, discuss it in limits we have we can talk about it in lengths so you cannot bifurcate between study and work as this student says compared to school school it's not that the work is harder it's just that it's more detailed and therefore more time consuming uh another thing student says is instead of procrastinating start thinking about the assignment right away so that you are the first one to get to the books most importantly if you get a good start on an assignment you allow yourself enough time to deal with any unexpected problems so rather than thinking whether you'll be able to do it or not or just giving your time to something less relevant at that what uh, at that particular point of time rather you should be concentrating on getting it done once you get that done it's already done as somebody has said that a good start is half done so once you start working on it it is already half done so rather than thinking much about it just get into it start working on it and you will save your time uh having some fun or relaxation on the weekend gives you enough strength to regain your sanity to start another week so if, if you have got something at the weekend don't overcommit yourself on the weekends give yourself time to relax give yourself time uh, to replenish give yourself time for fun give yourself time to meet your friends so that you can meet the week coming ahead head zone so if you cannot relax completely if you can replenish you cannot replenish yourself completely how you'll be able to cater to the commitments which are coming up in next week you should be completely satisfied with your weekend so that you can uh that's what my philosophy is i would like to pass on to you i always believe that my week weekend should be so uh, satisfactory that i am able to deliver to my weekdays properly so i always uh, keep weekends for myself i never uh, uh, overcommit myself on the weekends uh, this is the only task i do on the weekends believe me i come here uh, i take this web session i speak to students discuss their problems this is the only thing which i do uh, apart from my personal commitments on weekends i have uh, kept this time for you uh, 
not taking uh, much of your time enough because we have already taken much of your time. I think uh, we will end today's session. Anybody has got questions which they want to ask me right now or they can send me an email at lmsrc at uh, imts.com and uh, we'll be able to answer your questions or uh, you can send me through chat if you're not able to use your mic or you can ask me right now. Anybody with any questions regarding the session or anything else? When will the next session be held? The next webcast session uh, it will be in next two weeks time and you will be informed by our coordinator's email. You will be sent with an email by the, by the coordinator and time and date will be mentioned in it a week in advance. So you, so you can refer to it. Or if you want uh, you to be informed via phone because you don't uh, check your emails regularly, you can uh, let the coordinator know that they should be calling you up for the next webcast session and uh, they will be able to cater that for you. Thank you. Perfect. Anything else anybody wants to know? Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you for joining this webcast. We will be putting this on uh, the IMDS online learning portal as well as the blogs as well as the Facebook. So if you want to refer to this webcast, you can always go there. Thank you everyone. Thanks for joining in. This is your SME, Monique Rahi, logging off.